Welcome to Clearly Maths. Today we're going to be looking at solving quadratic inequalities. If you look on the board at the moment, you'll notice that I've drawn the graph of y equals x squared take away 4. Quite a simple quadratic. This is what it looks like. It's got roots at minus 2 and 2. Now, if I was to ask, when is x squared minus 4 bigger than or equal to 0? What I'm asking was, the y is my 0 here, so above 0 and above going up the way, above the x-axis we could say, so all the bits up here that I've highlighted in red would be when that is greater than or equal to 0. Similarly, I'm ask, I've asked down here, when is x squared minus 4 less than or equal to 0? Well, I look at the y-axis, the numbers get smaller, less than zero as I go down. So just the bit below the x-axis is when the graph of this is less than or equal to zero. And the only bit drawn underneath the x-axis is the bit in blue. So what we're going to be determining is, if I've got that and I want to know when it's less than or equal to zero, I would say that this is solutions for my, between minus two and two. And if it was above the x-axis, if I was asking when is it greater than or equal to zero, I would say, well, it's this bit, which is for x is less than minus two, or it's this bit, which is greater than or equal to minus two. And we're going to look at how to write that down. Here's something to just keep in mind. If the value of x is between the roots, then we get a double inequality. So if we looked at this bit here, if this is the bit we wanted below the x-axis, would say that x is between minus 4 and 5, and how you write that is minus 4 is less than x, which is less than 5. Similarly, if we end up solving an inequality and the bit we get is outside of the turning point, these bits here, we would say that x is less than this value, x is less than minus 2, going to the left, but it's bigger than this value, so x is greater than 3, going to the right. So between the turning point, you get a double inequality because it's between. Outside the turning point, you get two single inequalities, one less and one greater than. And let's go into an example to see how to actually solve these things. So example one comes from the HSN notes if you've got them. Solve x squared plus x minus 12 is less than zero. Steps to solving these is the same as solving a quadratic to start with. We make it equal to zero to find out where the roots are. So first step, find the roots. This is so we can draw a small sketch. So if I wanted the roots, I would have equal zero. This can be factorised. x and x, I want two numbers at times to get out to make 12, but add or take away to make 1. I want 3 and 4. And the signs, well, I want positive 1, so it's a positive 4, take away 3, and that gives you negative 12 when you times it. So our roots happen at x equal to 3, or x equals to negative 4. So if I was to draw a graph just noting the roots, I would have 3 over here, and I would have negative 4 over here. So that's something that looks a bit like that. And this is not an accurate graph at all. I've no idea where the turning point is because I've not bothered to work it out. It's in the middle of these numbers. Going back to the original question though, it says, when is this less than 0? So if it's less than 0, it's down the way, under the x-axis, because all the y's become negative. And that happens in this little section here. So if I was to highlight that little section, it would start here, and it would be only this bit is when it's less than zero, becomes bigger than zero above that bit. That's in between, so it's in between minus four, which is less than x, which is less than three. X is between minus four and three, and that is our final answer. Example 2 says, find the values of x for which 6 plus 7x minus 3x squared is greater than or equal to 0. So once again, we're going to start by finding the roots and drawing a sketch to see where the roots look are. So the roots, we've got 
minus 3x squared plus 7x plus 6 equals 0. So set that equal to 0 means I can do 3x squared minus 7x minus 6 equals 0 just by moving all the terms over to the other side, just to give that positive x squared. It's a little bit nicer and easier to work with when you are trying to factorise something. So a brief reminder of factorising, 3 times 6 is 18. So I'm looking for factors that make negative 18, but add or take away to make negative 7. So I'm just going to list the factors of 18. You've got 1 and 18. That's never going to make negative 7. You've got 2 and 9. Well, 2 and 9 is going to make 7. You've got 3 and 6, and that's all the factors, and 3 and 6 can never make 7. The only ones that can make 7 are 2 and 9. How does it make 7? Well, it's negative 7 I'm looking for, so it's negative 9 plus 2. So I can draw my little box, put in my quadratic inside it. I've got 3x squared minus 9x plus 2x to give them a minus 7x and then a minus 6 on the end. Factorise the top, the highest common factor between 3 and 9 is 3, x and x is x, and then just start tying each side together. So 3x times x is 3x squared, 3 times 3 is 9, so it's minus 3, x times 2 is 2x, so it's plus 2. I've now got my two factors x minus 3, 3x add 2. So factorising that, 3x plus 2 and x minus 3 equals 0. So that tells me my roots happen at minus 2 thirds or x equals to 3. If you want a nice quick sketch, we've got one root at minus 2 thirds and one root at 3. And I know that the graph will be upside down like this because it was a negative x squared. And if we go back to the original question asking us, when is this greater than or equal to zero? Well, that's above the x-axis. That only happens up here. So that's the only bit that is greater than or equal to zero. So minus two thirds is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 3. x is between minus 2 thirds and 3. Equal sign on the in equations because it's, it was greater than or equal to originally in the question. Next example says solve 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 is greater than 0. Again this comes from the HSN notes. So first step is the same as it always is. So we're going to look at the roots. So let's set 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 equal to 0. Try and factorise it. So we've got 2x and x. 2 times 3 would be 6, and then 1 would be 5, so it's going to be 3 and 1. And then we just need to get our signs correct. So we've got minus 3, 2 times minus 3 is minus 6 plus 1 is minus 5, that equals 0, so our roots are x equals minus a half, or x equals 3. Draw a little sketch then, so we've got minus a half, so we've got 3. I know that the shape is down the way because it's a positive x squared, and the question is asking for when this is greater than zero, so above the x-axis that happens. So it's only going to be the bit that's here and the bit that's here. Now that goes on forever, so all the way that way and all the way this way, x is less than minus a half, or x is bigger than three. Last example for this one, find the values of q for which x squared plus q minus 4x plus 1 over 2q equals 0 has key point no real roots. Remember from when we did the discriminant, 
If a quadratic has no real roots, it means the discriminant is less than zero. So we just set b squared minus 4ac to be less than zero, and that will help us get our q. So a equals 1. Where's my b? And there's my c. So be very careful. q minus 4 all squared minus 4 times 1 times a half q. That's q squared minus 8q plus 16. 4 times 1 is 4, times a half is 2, so minus 2q. Tidying that up, we get q squared minus 10q plus 16 is less than 0. We've now made a quadratic that we can solve and we do it the same way we look at the roots to start with. So looking at the roots of this, we've got q squared minus 10q plus 16, we'll set that equal to 0. Simple one to factorise, q and q, 8 and 2, minus 8, minus 2 is minus 10, 8 times 2 is 16. So if we're going to disappear when q equals 2 or q equals 8. So we can then draw a sketch and check when is that less than 0. So draw a little sketch, 2 and 8, positive q squared, We want that to be less than zero, so below the x-axis, it's just this bit here. So 2 is less than q is less than a. And we're done, it just asks us to find all the values of q for which made the quadratic possible. And there we are. This has been Claire Mass and today we'll be looking at how to solve quadratic inequalities. Take care, stay safe and goodbye.